The U.S. reported more than 1,700 deaths from the coronavirus Tuesday. That is the highest daily death toll since May. With cases surging across the country, New York City announced a big change. The nation's largest school system says it will switch back to remote learning starting Thursday. However, there is some promising news on the vaccine front. Drug maker Pfizer says new test results show its vaccine candidate is 95 percent effective. Danya Backus has the latest. As Americans wait in long lines across the country to get tested for the coronavirus, Pfizer and its partner BioNTech announced plans to apply for emergency use authorization of their vaccine after results show it is 95 percent effective. This is an extraordinary strong protection. Pfizer says the vaccine appears to protect older people and has virtually no side effects. The development comes as a White House Coronavirus Task Force report obtained by CBS News shows 47 states are now in the red zone for new cases. The task force calls the spread of the virus aggressive and unrelenting. At least 37 states have imposed new coronavirus restrictions in November. Here in Los Angeles County, restaurants and bars must now close at 10 p.m. starting Friday to slow the spread. In Michigan, officials sent an emergency alert to cell phones about mask wearing and new restrictions. Lindsay Wooten of Utah says her mother, father and grandfather were all in the same hospital with coronavirus. Only her father survived. I was one of those that said this is no different than a cold or the flu. And I was proven wrong, not once, not twice, but three times. And because of surging cases, New York City announced schools are going back to remote learning starting Thursday. Danya back is CBS News, Los Angeles. Carl Zimmer is the author of The Matter column for The New York Times. He's also the author of 13 books, including A Planet of Viruses. And he joins me now. Carl, welcome. Thanks very much for being with us. What needs to happen and about how long does it take before we go from this positive news about these trials to mass distribution? Well, there are going to be a series of steps. Uh, first of all, the FDA is going to have to receive an application from Pfizer and Moderna. They're going to have to review it with outside experts. And then uh, these uh, are vaccines are going to have to be distributed on, on a mass scale. Um, they could be starting to be distributed as early as December, which is extraordinary in, in the history of vaccines. So that is a real possibility now. But there will only be a, a small fraction of the supply that the whole country will need. Well, what are some of the logistical challenges that remain in bringing these vaccines to market? Well, uh, these companies are making vaccines in, in vast quantities at a speed that has never been seen before. So um, they've been trying to start in advance uh, manufacturing them, uh, but also uh, they're going to have to be distributed. They're going to have to be sent out to literally thousands of drugstores, clinics, hospitals, and so on. And these vaccines that are the first out of the gate, um, they need to be uh, kept very cold. In fact, Pfizer needs to be kept, Pfizer's vaccine has to be kept at negative 94 degrees Fahrenheit. And so they're building special dry ice boxes to distribute them. Well, Carl, tell us more about the sampling of people who participated in these trials. Is it a racially and ethnically diverse group? And have the vaccines been equally effective for people of different backgrounds and ages? Well, it, it, the, these vaccines uh, efforts, they have had, um, you know, a fairly diverse uh, group of volunteers. Uh, people from different ethnic groups and also different ages. Um, so they include people who are over 65. Uh, and one thing that's really encouraging is that there doesn't seem to be any particular group that's not doing well with these vaccines. Old people are, are it's well known that vaccines often don't provoke a very strong response in uh, older people. But at least with Pfizer's vaccine, it looks as if uh, the uh, the response from people over 65 is just about as effective as for everybody else. So that's really encouraging since old people are the ones who are most at risk of, of dying of this disease. Well, what do you make, Carl, of the claims by Moderna and Pfizer that these vaccine candidates cause, quote, no safety concerns, end quote? 
Well, you know, we're going to have to take a look at the uh, the details in, in their applications. Um, the FDA is going to be looking over those safety reports very carefully. But it's extremely encouraging, again, that uh, that the, these vaccine makers have not seen serious side effects. That's that's what you want. Um, you know, obviously, uh, it'll be necessary for, for the FDA and the CDC to, to keep looking at these vaccines as they get rolled out to more and more people to make sure there aren't any extremely rare side effects. Uh, there, there, this is going to be an ongoing process. But, you know, people, you know, should should only take a, a vaccine once they have the confidence that it's safe. That's what the process is right now. Well, Johnson & Johnson says they are also working to develop a coronavirus vaccine. What do we know about the status of that and other vaccines in development or trial stages? Yeah, it's really extraordinary. I mean, worldwide, there are, are uh, over 50 vaccines that are now in clinical trials. Um, in the United States, Johnson Johnson has one that's very advanced. We could get maybe some early results maybe next month. Uh, AstraZeneca has a trial of its own, could have results too, and there are other companies that are going into phase three trials like Sanofi fairly soon. Um, so, you know, by the spring, you could be looking at not one, not two, but who knows, maybe four, five, even six different vaccines. And let's, let's hope that they're all as effective as, as Moderna and Pfizer. We will have to wait and see. It's really remarkable to think about that time frame, though, Carl, when just a few months ago, I remember talking to public health experts who said these typically take years uh, to come down the pike. All right, Carl Zimmer for us. Carl, thank you very much. Thank you.